this is my crew with Starseed Tarot and for today we'll be doing a pick a card reading to see what your spirit guides would like you to know. If this is your first time doing a pick a card reading, all you have to do is pick a pile, go into the description box below, look for your timestamp, and either click on it or fast forward the video to your timestamp. I do want you to use your intuition to gather the, any information that you may find in your reading today. That is how it's going to best serve you. Because this is a generalized reading, it is highly recommended that you use your intuition. If you would like to, you are more than welcome to pick more than one pile or you can listen to the whole video if your spirit calls for you to do so. Without further ado, let's get started. Over here is pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. All right, so this is the reading for pile number one. Welcome to your reading. So what I'm gonna do is, um, what I have out are oracle cards. If it calls for me to use tarot cards. I will draw out tarot cards, but for the most part, um, we'll be doing our reading today with oracle cards, okay? So, okay, so the first card is Dream Talk. Second card is Tortoise. And your last card is Full Moon in Leo, okay? So right off the bat, I am sensing that you're a person that receives vivid dreams. Vivid dreams that come to you um, and sometimes they don't make sense, but you can remember it as if it's something that happened yesterday. Um, so what your guides are telling you is to pay attention to those dreams. You might even be a person who has not yet understood what your spiritual gifts are and while you are feeling something present you don't know how to utilize your gifts and so the, your guides are telling you that you can communicate or receive messages from your guides through your dreams um, what they want you to do too is to keep a dream journal keep a journal of all your dreams exercise that muscle to know how to navigate your dreams it's what they call lucid dreaming, when you are actively aware that you are dreaming in your dream. And so when you're able to do that, you can start, um, you're exercising that muscle to know how to pull information, extract information, as well as extract messages from your guides to be able to relay them. Oftentimes too, we disregard dreams because we think that it's just memories or memories um, that are triggered through our REM state and while that's often true sometimes we don't know why we have prophetic dreams too so um, you may even be a person who have dreams that are prophetic you have dreams and then five days down it comes it manifests and so in situations like that trust trust that your dreams are really trying to tell you something Prophetic dreams are interesting in that I have not yet come across anything that can explain why we have dreams that come true. And for, for those who are very in tune to their dreams, they have had more than one prophetic dream. I am one of those people. I've had prophetic dreams where I'll have a dream not understand like what's going on or I'll feel like I'm in a different time or a different part of the world. And then literally the next day, something comes up on the news. And so trust that, trust that the dreams that you're receiving are trying to relay you a message. And what you do with that message, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you take action, but that message is for, there for you to help you become more aware of everything else that's happening in the world. And so depending on where you are in your spiritual journey, um, this gift of receiving dreams from your spirit guides is something that's very, very true for you and pay attention to that. That might be one of your st strongest, strongest gifts. Um, I'm one to believe that everybody has some sort of clairs. And so 
One of them may just be that dream. If you're able to have these vivid dreams, you may even be someone who's clairvoyant, who's able to receive messages through images. Um, and so really pay attention to that. At the same time too, try not to spend so much so much energy into trying to crack the code inside inside your head. Um, pay attention to your dreams, but don't become too obsessed because here you might even be someone who does become too obsessed. And so you're always thinking, you're always thinking and imagining and um, in a way daydreaming. And so hence that's maybe even why you have such prophetic dreams or you receive so many messages through your dreams. Um, and so as that type of a person, what your skies are also telling you is that while you are having these vivid dreams, we also remember to stay present, stay grounded. Um, that's what this tortoise card is telling me. And then the last card is the full moon in Leo. And the message is don't let pride get in your way. And so pride sort of manifests in a multitude of ways. It manifests as we know it as um, someone who is too prideful to apologize. Um, that's one way that we recognize pride, but pride could even be where you are, you want to figure out how you can navigate the spiritual world without asking for help. And for everyone who is on a spiritual journey, they need a team of mentors. And so rely on your guides for that. There's a reason why you came across this video today and you're wanting to know how to communicate with your guides. But you're also very stubborn because you don't want to. There's a part of you that fears the unknown. And so trust your guides. Build that relationship with your guides. I have also done a lot of healing and work within myself to be able to have a good relationship with your guides. And so you can even think about your guides as not an ex not something that is outside of you but is an extension of you you are in them as they are in you and so build that relationship with your guides don't let pride get in the way of how your gifts are supposed to help you you may have even been a person who's been told that because of your cultural background you can only practice spirituality one way but in this day and age, because there's so much healing to be done, you have to draw upon all the resources that are accessible to you to be able to do the healing work. And so don't be confined to a specific way of practicing spirituality. Maybe your thing is just relaying messages through cards as I do. Maybe your thing is that you do energy work. Maybe your thing is that you do both. And so try to figure that out. Communicate with your guides. If you're a person who receives dreams very well, you may even do really well in meditations. Seek guided meditations to be able to help you to come back and forth from the spirit, the spiritual world to know how to communicate with your guides. There's a really good meditation on YouTube. I can't remember who the, who the YouTuber is or what channel it is, but there is a guided meditation to know how to meet um, a spirit guide, one of your spirit guides who helps you travel between your conscious and subconscious. Look for those resources. I guarantee that it will be very, very helpful. Go into these meditations open-hearted. Um, it's okay to feel some fear of the unknown, but trust in the universe. Trust that everything that is happening to you is real and that it is all within your own ability. When you start practicing writing down your dreams, you start becoming more aware of your dreams. You start being able to have lucid dreaming where you become more aware of yourself dreaming in those dreams. And so that's one way to exercise that muscle, to not be so vulnerable when you do go into meditations or when you do go into dreams to, to obtain the knowledge and the messages that you need to, to relay them to either your loved ones or your friends or to yourself and how it makes sense to you. Also through your dreams, start writing down signs and symbols that really stick out to you. 
creating a symbol system is very important in your spiritual journey because the symbol system is going to help you to connect with your guides in the waking world. For me, my guides reveal themselves through smell and through things that come across my path. And so for me, some smells that, that um, I have an affinity towards is the rose scents, the flower for florally smells. That's one way my guides let me know that they are present and that I'm not alone and they're here to guide me. Another thing is feathers. I receive a lot of feathers too and so that also gives me a sign that my guides are present or that I'm protected. Um, another thing too is they come to me as insects and butterflies and so start building up your symbol system to know how you can communicate with them and upon coming across these symbols and objects thank them thank them for giving you this message and you can decide if you want to collect that for yourself or you just want to leave it there and give thanks to them okay so before I end your reading, I'm just going to read off each and every individual card as each of them has an important message for you. So the first one is Dream Talk. Your subconscious constantly and steadily speaks through your dreams. It's just one of the many ways in which your soul and those here in the spirit world can reach out and communicate with you through signs, symbols, messages, and more. Okay? next card is the tortoise you're too fragmented so do whatever it takes to get grounded in addition to what i provided about being grounded you're probably someone who's very very um people describe you as very everywhere and so you could be you're, you're easily distracted and you're easily you easily jump from one conversation to another or things grab your attention really quickly and so that's a sign that you're a very, very empathic person. You're very in tune with the energy of everything and everyone around you. And so one way to stay present and not be so eerie or not be so in your head is to stay grounded and stay present. Know when to protect your energy. Because you're always everywhere, That's that may be even a sign that you absorb other people's energies as well. And so protect, protect your peace protect your aura, protect your energy bubble. One way to do that is to get grounded and do meditations. You can do meditations outdoors. You can take walks, uh, barefoot walks on the beach to be grounded. A very good, a very good method for staying grounded is working out in nature or just having time with nature. Or if you have pets, spend time with your pets, okay? And your last card is, don't let pride get in the way, okay? So, for pile number one, I think this is very straightforward. I'm not going to pull any tarot cards for this pile reading. If this resonated with you, awesome. You can like or comment down below. Let me know. Um, if not, that's completely fine, as long as you enjoyed this reading um, and... If you have not, press the subscribe button or subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to follow me at Instagram and Facebook at Starcy Tarot. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Hello, this is the reading for pile number two. Welcome to the reading. Now, what I have are oracle cards. If I need further elaboration, I will pull out my tarot cards, but we'll see how this goes, okay? All right, two of the nudges. Mm -hmm. The mouse, interesting. And work through your fears. Okay, this is very, very clear to me as well. What your spirit guides are telling me is that you have been receiving signs all along and you're ignoring them for some reason. You're looking past them for some reason. And I'm feeling like it's a fear. It's a fear of the unknown, a fear of spirituality. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read up all the messages on the cards and then 
I'll further elaborate on what your guides would like you to know. So your first card is intuitive nudges. Intuition is the language of the soul. We are all born aware with a profound sense of inner knowing. Intuition is the greatest gifts we possess, which keeps us connected to our higher selves, the universe, and to our divine spirit. Your next card is Mouse. You're overlooking some important details, so play, pay closer attention to what's going on. And the last one is Work Through Your Fears, New Moon in Scorpio. Okay, and I think it's very interesting that we are currently entering Scorpio season two. Scorpio season is the second half of this month, and it also falls on Halloween. And so, as we know, around Halloween and this time of the year, there is a lot of active spiritual energy, okay? So, that may even be something that you fear. You fear that because there's so much energy, so much spiritual energy going around, and you're feeling so sensitive that you just don't want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with anything spiritual. You might even be someone who sees um, clairvoyant, who sees spirits, and you're just tired of it. You're just tired of it. And so, um, one way to protect yourself from that unfortunately um, it's very hard to just stop these things from happening but one way is to build up your endurance in ignoring these things that are happening trust in yourself that you have all the courage that you have had to ride through this wave to ride through this um, sort of very odd phase of the year okay we also have the equinox either um the equinox that has just passed and will be entering the winter solstice and so around those times too um there's a lot of energy going around especially connected to the moon and the sun okay One way that you can also deter from fearing the energy that's existing outside of you is to look inward. Listen to your heart, listen to your intuition and what it wants. Ignore all the extra energy around you, all the extraness, the spiritual extraness around you and listen within. What does your spirit, what does your soul need? Develop that relationship, strengthen that relationship with your guides. As I mentioned in the first pile reading, build that relationship with your guides. Your guides are not only you, but you are them, all right? There are reasons why you have an affinity for certain smells and certain patterns, certain things. It's because your spirit guides are always talking and working through you. And it's not anything that is completely separate from you. They have been with you since your the time that you were born and so at the same time they they are they are you and you are them okay so pay close attention to these things trust in yourself trust that you can have courage to uh, brave through the fears, the fears of spirituality, the fears of the unknown. I think that's been a huge thing for many folks who are who are awakening is that they are, they are afraid of the unknown. I myself have worked very hard on building building endurance and also stamina in entering the spirit world and just having building my courage to a point where if i do experience things i know that i'm protected know that you are protected build build your protective bubble build your peaceful space all right there are a lot of guided meditations out there that help you to envision what your protective bubble will look like one that i really like there's a meditation by steve nobel he does a lot of really great meditations that help you to protect yourself from negative energy if that is something that you fear. Um, in these meditations too, he teaches you how to transmute fear into an empowering thing, an empowering process. 
So I highly recommend you to look up Steve Nobel's meditations. Any of his meditations, he starts off with building that protective bubble and clearing out low vibrating astral energy, astral entities, okay? So I think this is all that I have for you, pile number two. Essentially, what your guides are telling you is to, to trust yourself, build your courage to explore your spiritual self. You don't have to go in all the way. The first thing that you can do, and the only thing that you can do for yourself at the moment is listen to your heart, work on your inner spirit, your soul work. Listen to those intuitive nudges and pay attention to the important details that mean the most to you. And by doing so, by doing the inner work, the soul work and the shadow work, you can start building that stamina and that endurance to overcome your fears. So pile number two, this is all that I have for you. I hope that it resonated with you. If it did, like and leave a comment down below. If it didn't, that's completely fine. This is a generalized reading and I do understand that some of this may or may not resonate with people. If you haven't, subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Starseed Tarot. Thank you again for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. Alright, this is the reading for pile number three. The cards that I will be using today are oracle cards, but if I need further elaboration, I may pull out some tarot cards, so we'll see how the reading goes, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the message from each of the cards and then um, I will further elaborate on what your spirit guides would like to know, okay? So your first card is have fun and what it says is stop. When was the last time you had fun? When was the last time you took a chance and did something silly? Something totally unlike you. Something just for the joy of it. It's long overdue for you to let go of your analytical mind and give yourself and your soul permission to have fun. In addition to that, the grouse card comes up and it says express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing. And your last one is nothing is yet set in stone, okay? So I'm getting the energy that you are someone who has been so wrapped up in your mind that you have lost sight of the things around you. You have lost sight of how fresh the roses or the flowers smell because you have been working so, so hard that you've had to put aside your spiritual journey. And so what your guides are telling you is to stop and enjoy, enjoy your journey, enjoy your spiritual journey. Listen intuitively to what your guides are telling you. You can even see here that your card says, have fun, have fun with it, have fun with your journey. Don't take it too seriously. Maybe it's been a thing where you feel like you have to practice something, you have to be a healer. And you've been focusing on this journey so hard that you think that um, you have to incorporate it, incorporate it into part of your work, a part of your, um, what you do as a career. You may even be someone who's trying to figure out how you can fit it in and 
um, you're wanting to get validation from other practitioners who have been doing it for years and years. You want validation from them. When all in all honesty, you really your guides are telling you that you really do not have to do that as long as you have that relationship with your guides. I also have been in that situation before where I've wanted to the only way that I can accept my spiritual journey was to be validated by other spiritual practitioners and so one after the other they were all telling me what I wanted to hear but it was really up to me to figure out how I wanted to practice it and so how I came to it was actually through my profession when I started working with people and I started realizing how I could I could talk and work with people and then through that I was also realizing how I was taking on other people's energy too and what could I do to um, alleviate that or what could I do to um, basically draw boundaries so that I wasn't so overworked or feeling so emotionally drained after my after my appointments and so because I was so focused and so serious about everything around me um, and also my spiritual journey and feeling like nobody was taking me seriously, I lost sight of what was most important to me. And only until I realized that, you know, the spiritual journey and everything spiritual and energy related is all around me. It is not something where I can just switch on and off. Your gifts, you may be able to do that, but spirituality is everywhere, all right? And your guides want you to know that. It's not anything where you have to make it a living, make a living out of it. It could just be that you, you work at a cashier at a Starbucks and yet you have the spiritual gift. Use it for how it's going to help you. You don't have to be an almighty healer. You don't have to be a spiritual leader. You come back. What you need to do is come back and think about how this spiritual journey is important for you. That's something that I've had to battle with for a long, long time. And this is how I've came to it. I found, I found tarot reading as my passion. I found tarot reading as something fun that I enjoyed doing. Not necessarily as something that was going to um, take advantage of people, but if there was a message that needed to be relayed, I wanted to share that. And so it wasn't anything that I wanted to do to um, show off what I could do. Oftentimes, I came to a point where I was so, I was so, so drained and so, so sensitive to everything that I just wanted to figure out what I could do to alleviate all this anxiety and all this buildup that I was experiencing. Not necessarily because it was mine, but because it was somebody else. How could it, how could I alleviate it? And so, with the third card, what your guides are telling you is that even though you're very sensitive and you're feeling everything around you and you want to make people understand that you want people to know that you have this gift what your guides are telling you is that you have to remember how does how does your gifts come back to you how does your spiritual journey come back to you is it for somebody else for you to experience this or is it mainly for you and your guides want you to remember that what this last card is also telling you is nothing is yet set in stone. And so even though someone has told you this is how you should practice it and that's the only way you should practice it, come back to the thinking, come back to yourself and think about how, how is it going to serve you? How is this going to serve you, right? How is your spiritual journey serving you? For me, how I've also balanced it out is that my spiritual journey is also my healing journey and how are they intertwined. 
my healing journey and how I've come to understand it is that it is mine, mine and mine's only. It is nobody else's journey. And the same thing with my spiritual journey. It is mine's and mine's alone. It is not my husband. It is not my child. It is not my friends. It is mine's alone. And so just because somebody told you, you have to do it a certain way. Do not be tied down to that. Your guides are telling you to not be tied down to that. At the same time, too, your guides are also telling you to not be tied down to it because in whatever form of spirituality that you believe, you have to build that relationship with your guides, whether you call them angels or whether you call them ascended masters or you call them star seats. It is up to you on how you want to build that relationship with them to make it more enjoyable for you, right? Having fun with it. And what the Grouse card is telling you too is to embrace, embrace the moment, embrace this ability that you have, embrace the fact that you can communicate with your guides and listen to them, right? Follow your heart and what you wanna do in your spiritual journey. Don't listen to what somebody else has to tell you. Say, for example, if you're from a culture where you have to be a shaman to be a spiritual person, in this day and age, how does that look like? You can still be very respectful towards a certain culture and your own culture, but how do you find a middle ground without hurting, hurting others, all right? I don't know if that makes sense, but what your guides are telling me through the cards is to be in the moment, follow your heart, have fun with your spiritual journey, and remember that nothing is set in stone. Follow, follow your heart to where you want to be. You don't have to be an almighty spiritual healer or a spiritual leader to do the work. What it really comes down to is how does your spiritual journey serve you? All right, and so pile number three, this is all that I have for you today. If it resonated with you, like or leave a comment down below. If you have not done it yet, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Starseed Tarot. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.